It's my pleasure to present the gravitational lens experiment. So we shall make use yeah, of the foot of a glass of wine to simulate the properties of a point mass lens. Well, here we have produced yeah, some better models simulating yeah, the point mass lens gravitational lens properties. And here is still another one, yeah? Very nice uh, big lens that has been manufactured by my wife and myself a long time ago. So in this experiment, we'll make use yeah, of the deflector of the lens. The source of light, yeah, which is supposed to be the quasar, very distant object. And third, we need an observer. Yeah? So, and I'll be the, the observer in this case. Now, what we see, I'll just dim the light, is that in the absence yeah, of the deflector, wherever I set my eye, I'll see, of course, yeah, the image of the quasar. And what we see here, that the screen I'm showing you here, yeah, is more or less uniformly illuminated yeah, by the background quasar. As I go farther away, fainter it is. As I come closer yeah, to the quasar, brighter, brighter it is. Yeah. Now I set along the path of the light rays the deflector, the lens, like this. And what we see here on the screen is that the screen is no, not any longer uniformly illuminated. Yeah? But there is a maximum concentration of light yeah, along a pseudo focal line. You see, so it's everywhere in space. Yeah? And so, if by chance an observer has his eyes yeah, just located yeah, on this bright pseudo focal line, yeah, what he sees is a perfect Einstein ring because the conditions of perfect alignment with the deflector and the source. Yeah, are fulfilled. So, what I see once more, yeah, I set my eye, yeah, near the maximum of light that you see here on my eye, and I see an Einstein ring, bright Einstein ring. Now, if I go just a little bit aside, the Einstein ring breaks in two lensed images. Of course, in the universe, yeah, mass distributions are very seldomly symmetric. And to introduce an asymmetry in the mass distribution, I just tilt the lens a little bit like this. Yeah? And what we see now on the screen is that the maximum concentration of light that I had in a single point yeah, has exploded yeah, in a very strange shape. It's a diamond shape, which is named acoustics. Yeah? So you see the acoustics is everywhere yeah? and here on the background screen. You see that the acoustics yeah, is composed yeah, of four folds. One, two, three, four. And also of four cusps. One, two, three, four. And what you will see, I'll set the camera in a moment, yeah, in the center yeah, of these caustics. And what will happen is that instead of seeing an Einstein ring, you see I'm right in the center, yeah, my eye is right in the center of the caustics, I see four lensed images of the background quasar. As I move my eye yeah, close to a fold, so now my my eye yeah, is very near to a fold, I see two of the four lens images merging together. Now, as I set my eye close to a cusp, I see three of the four lens images merging together. Here I am close to one of the four cusps. Now I'll move around another one. Yes, and now I see three of 
the fallen images merging again together. Now we could wonder yeah, about the lifetime of such gravitational lensing effect. Well, typically in the universe, yeah, it, it is of the order of a few tens of millions of years. Yeah? It takes the time yeah, for the deflector or for the source yeah, to cross yeah, this caustic shape because of all the relative motions yeah, between the observer, the source, and the deflector. 